Hey, lovely people, the rap industry just turned into a full-blown drama. Jaguar Wright has been spilling all the tea on Diddy, and it seems the saga just took a dark and violent twist. Jaguar Wright, not one to hold back, has been on a mission to expose Diddy for his alleged wrongdoings. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a trafficker. But guess what? Diddy didn't take it well. Instead of facing the music, he decided to take matters into his own hands, literally. In a shocking turn of events, Diddy reportedly tracked down Jaguar Wright and physically assaulted her in an act of revenge. Yes, you heard that right. The man who's been dishing out hits in the music industry decided to throw some physical hits in real life. Jaguar, who had been vocal about supporting those allegedly wronged by Diddy, is now facing the consequences of her outspokenness. It's a dark chapter in the rap industry, and it seems Diddy has shown his true colors a man of no grace, resorting to violence for the sake of revenge, and the revenge itself is for his sins he done in the past. As you all may know already, the case between Diddy and Cassie, where she sued him for SA, DV, and trafficking, has been recently settled after the two agreed to drop charges after paying an undisclosed amount of money. Shortly after, however, two more alleged victims came forth, accusing Diddy of SA and many other serious crimes. Now, many are saying that there are many more men and women who were allegedly victims of Diddy's crimes. This isn't exclusive to Diddy, however. Jaguar Wright has claimed that the industry is filled with power powerful men who utilize their powerful positions to traffic, and essay younger people who are overtaken by their influence. One of these powerful individuals being Clive Davis, a powerful figure in the recording industry who gave Diddy a hand in jumpstarting his infamous label, Bad Boy Entertainment. But what really went down between Diddy and Clive, and is their relationship the reason why these heinous crimes have never been fully prosecuted? We'll break it all down for you, so keep watching. The lawsuit Cassie filed against Diddy was only the beginning of what would later unfold to be a mess of secrets, crimes, and allegations because just one week after the two both settled their case for an undisclosed amount of money, two more victims came forth claiming to have been victims of some disturbing allegations, which involved both of them being essayed. One of the two women being Joey Dickerson Neal, who filed a civil lawsuit against Diddy in New York Supreme Court and demanded a trial by jury. Her claims go all the way back to 1991 when she agreed to go on a date with Diddy. During their date, her drink was allegedly spiked, causing her to shortly after be in a physical state where she could not walk nor stand on her own. Due to the substance Joy was unknowingly given, she lacked the physical and mental ability to fend Diddy off. She also claims that Diddy then video recorded the entire himself essaying her to later show everyone within their circle. According to the lawsuit, Joey went to the police and filed a report in New York and New Jersey immediately, speaking to several prosecutors in the hopes of being able to press charges against Diddy. Unfortunately, she was told by the prosecutors that her allegations would need to be corroborated. The third alleged victim filed a civil suit claiming that not only Diddy, but also singer Aaron Hall took turns essaying in the early 90s. The woman, who asked to be kept anonymous, claimed that she was attacked by Diddy while she attended an after-party at Aaron Hall's apartment. The lawsuit states that once Diddy was done with her that night, she laid in bed shocked and traumatized while she attempted to process what had just happened. As she was getting dressed, Hall entered the room. She was in pinning her down and forcing himself onto her. As these shocking revelations are being told to the world, more unconfirmed reports began circulating, claiming there to be more people who were victims to Diddy's actions in the past who plan on coming forward in the near future. These victims, however, are not only limited Limited to women, as men have also claimed to have been essayed by Diddy. According to sources, Diddy also essayed some of the male workers that he had paid to participate in Cassie's forced freak-offs. Diddy's bodyguard, Gene Deal, confirmed these allegations in an interview where he said that Diddy hired those male S workers for his own personal needs. Not only that, but also said how over the years he would have frequent encounters with men at Turkish baths. He didn't want it to come back to him in a way, you know, he hiring the people, he gonna put it all on her because she knew what he liked. Because she wasn't just hiring it for her. Don't get that effed up, Art. If you think that she was just hiring those male pro for herself, nah, wait outside a Turkish baths for them. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together twice, sometimes three times a week. Me and the driver be outside. 
He'll run into the Turkish bath. Putting aside Diddy's sexuality, some of the more concerning allegations involve him essaying and trafficking both men and women for year under the radar. And according to Jaguar Wright, the only reason he's been able to avoid getting caught by the police is because of his connections with other well-connected traffickers in the industry such as Clive Davis. During an interview with Storm Monroe, Jaguar said that Diddy could have potentially been groomed into essaying by his late mentor and Uptown Records founder, Andre Harrell, who in turn was groomed by his mentor, Clive Davis. Jaguar said that Diddy utilized his powerful position within the industry to traffic both men and women after having allegedly being taught how to from Andre and Clive. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a s trafficker. Okay. And he's using music and entertainment to s traffic. Now, is this, is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like it I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think sexuality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Well. Tell, tell us how he was Who was mentored by Clyde Davis. She pointed out that Andre Harrell fired Diddy from Motown Records in 1993, causing him to shortly after start his own label known as Bad Boy, which quickly surpassed Uptown. In 2019, Diddy shared his tribute to Clive, saying, Clive Davis and Arista Records gave me a chance when I was starting Bad Boy Entertainment. He was one of the first industry executives who really believed in me. I'm forever grateful for him. Jaguar said that the only reason why Diddy was only able to build his Bad Boy empire so quickly during that stage of his life was because of the favors he would do for him. Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like, Puff started out as an intern. She also suggested that Clive helped Diddy cover up his 1991 City College incident where nine people were killed during a stampede at a charity basketball game that was organized by Diddy himself. The victims range from children, pregnant woman, and the girlfriend of rapper Father MC who was signing to Uptown Records at the time. And he got smart and he listened to all of his advisors, mostly Clive Davis, and he won. Like he was determined to win. Like nobody knew how determined he was to win. Like that whole thing with Father MC, he covered that thing up real fast. And he didn't have proper security, he didn't have proper permits, and there was a stampede and Father MC's woman got uh, trampled to death. And now, how, uh, does, how does one go about covering up something like that? Well, I mean, uh, apparently you pay people. From what I've been told. To no one's surprise, however, Diddy denied being responsible for the tragedy. According to multiple sources, however, Diddy dismissed the warnings he received from his security, who pointed out that the event was severely overbooked, which could easily cause a tragedy. As far as Clive Davis and Diddy go, rumors suggest that the reason Clive helped Diddy start Bad Boy was because he would allegedly be taking over Andre Hero's place as Clive's boy toy. So Clive Davis is over Arista, which is over Diddy's Bad Boy record. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came about. The two share a lot in common. Not only have both individuals been in powerful and well-respected positions within their industry, they have also both faced multiple allegations regarding saying and trafficking young men and women. And to top it all off, they both have had many people who have worked with them end up dying under mysterious circumstances. For example, Clive has had a long-standing conspiracy theory, which ties him to the death of Whitney Houston. On February 11th, 2012, Whitney was found dead in her bathtub at a Beverly Hilton hotel while Clive was preparing for his pre grammy party. When everyone received the news that Whitney had passed, he decided to continue hosting the event, which led to many people raising eyebrows towards him as they couldn't understand how all these celebrities would decide to party. While Whitney's dead body was upstairs, Diddy too partied the night. Whitney Houston passed and was even hospitalized due to a severe migraine he developed after returning home from his post-Grammy party he hosted at the Playboy Mansion. But again, this is not about Clive and Diddy being bisexual. What people want to know is if Jaguar is telling the truth about them trafficking young men and women. Because
because if she is, then it could mean they've been using their money and influence to avoid criminal charges for many decades. While Diddy faces these serious allegations regarding essaying men and women, there is also serious talk behind him also being the mastermind behind the death of Tupac in the wake of Keith D being recently arrested in Las Vegas this year. Now, these aren't your everyday accusations. There is stone cold proof that Dwayne Davis, known as Keith D, was a main character behind Tupac's demise. Everything from interviews where he confesses he was present when the act went down to a book he wrote detailing the events. Even with all this evidence stacked on his head, the investigators involved in this case don't seem to be satisfied with only taking Keith D down. Throughout their hunt, they've realized that even though Keith D is unmistakably guilty, the real mastermind was hiding in plain sight all along. Despite his alibi, the police have discovered new evidence that could potentially link him to the crime. The evidence includes an iPhone, several laptops, a Vibe magazine about Shakur, photographs and bullets can be the same ones used in the fatal shooting. Diddy has always denied these accusations, attributing them to envy and attempts to tarnish his reputation. However, with the case now being presented to a grand jury in Las Vegas, Diddy's confidence seems to be wavering. The court of public opinion has already made its judgment, with many believing that Diddy was involved in the crime. Retired LAPD officer Greg Kading has been vocal about his belief that Diddy was involved in the crime. In his documentary, Keating directly accused Diddy of planning Tupac's fatal shooting. He claims that Diddy paid $1 million to eliminate his rival, a claim that Diddy has always denied. Now, with the case reopened and new evidence surfacing, Diddy's past may be catching up with him. Even other industry heavyweights like Eminem have referenced the controversy in their music. The fate of Diddy now lies in the hands of the police and the industry is watching closely. Interestingly, this isn't the first time Diddy has faced such allegations. In 2008, he called a report claiming he was behind the 1994 shooting of Tupac Shakur, completely untrue and a lie. So what do you guys think about all these allegations? Leave your comments down below, and as always, thanks for watching.